Right, oh, we'll try this again. Don't you hate it when you film everything, you sit down and then you realize that you forgot to turn the backlights on. <sighs> so, big announcement from Sony today. Well, actually the announcement was yesterday. Big announcement from Sony yesterday. Although, I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna have this uploaded today. Big announcement from Sony, and I do mean big, about 600 mil worth of big in fact, because Sony have announced not one, but two super telephoto lenses. A 600 mil f4 prime lens that's $13,000 and everyone's raving about it. But for me, the bigger announcement of the two is the 200 to 600 millimeter f5.6 to 6.3. So let's cover the 600 f4 first. This is a bold move from Sony, a big move from Sony, and a move that needed to be made. Because I remember two years ago when Sony released the A9, and everyone was banging on about the 20 frames a second, you know, really fast autofocus performance. But there was a lot of pro sports and wildlife shooters were all saying the same thing, which is... The performance of the camera looks fantastic, but you need lenses to go with it. You know, a, a fantastic body with no lenses is like a chocolate teapot. It's absolutely useless. The only long lens that Sony had in their arsenal at the time was the 100 to 400 G Master lens, which 400 mil for a lot of sports and wildlife photographers isn't long enough, and 5.6 is a bit too slow. That was rectified slightly uh, last year, was it? When Sony finally released their 400 f2.8, which did open up a little bit more for sports shooters where 400mm is a little bit more usable and f2.8, particularly in dim lit stadiums, works quite well. But a lot of the wildlife photographers we're still saying they need a 600 mil. Yes, you can bolt a 1.4 teleconverter onto a 400 and it'll give you 560 mil f4, but teleconverters generally drop the image quality and also slow the autofocus down. So while I've seen some professional sports photographers and photojournalists starting to use Sony A9s, there's still quite a lot of professional photographers out there who said they, would, they wouldn't even uh, consider the possibility of switching to Sony until they had something like a 600mm f4 available. Well, today is that day. And yes, it's $13,000, but that's pretty typical for a lens of that size. In fact, the Canon 600 f4 Mark III is the exact same price, and the Nikon f4 which is actually a bigger, heavier lens, and older lens is only about £800 cheaper. So Sony have priced it pretty much in line with the competition. Now, unfortunately, I've not had a chance to get hands-on with these lenses. I can only presume my invitation from Sony to go to New Jersey for the press release was lost in the post or something. But I have watched a lot of the reviews from people who were there to test the lenses out. And they all said pretty much the same thing, that the lens is phenomenally good in terms of image quality and autofocus speed. Most notably, the fact that the lens is fast enough to keep up with the A9, so you can get 20 frames a second burst rate. But for the most part, for most people, that 600mm f4 is realistically a pipe dream. A lot of people may well rent it, hire it out for odd particular shoot, a particular project that they're working on, but very few people I imagine are going to go and buy that lens with their own money. Which leads me on to the 200 to 600 mil, which like I said, I think is the bigger of the two announcements. Well, it's not the bigger of the two announcements because obviously the 600 mil F4 is huge, whereas the 200 to 600 is small. But in terms of impact on the market, the 200 to 600 is definitely a big announcement because people have been crying out for native super telephoto lenses from all the manufacturers. We've had lots of third-party options from Sigma and Tamron. You know, we've had 
the 150 to 500 and the 50 to 500 from Sigma. Then we had the 150 to 600 from Tamron. Then Sigma released the Contemporary and Sport 150 to 600. Then Tamron released the 150 to 600 G2. And more recently, Sigma released the 60 to 600 millimeter Sport. So there was a lot of third party options. But the main manufacturers didn't seem to adopt that particularly quick. Nikon a few years ago brought out the 200 to 500 f5.6, which was quite popular with hobbyist uh, Nikon shooters. But both Canon and Sony had 100 to 400s on the market. But if you wanted anything longer than 400 that wasn't extortionately priced, you needed to go third party. And third party lenses generally don't work quite as well as natives. They're pretty good. But generally, in terms of autofocus, speed, responsiveness, overall performance, native is generally better. And especially with Sony's, because all the third-party options were either Canon or Nikon mount that you had to adapt onto the E-mount. There wasn't any in uh, an E-mount option. Now, granted, Sigma make their own adapter, the MC11, which does work pretty well with their own lenses but they still don't work quite as well as native mount lenses do. So for a long time, people have been asking for a 200 to 600 mil kind of lens. It's been heavily rumored for as long as I can remember that Canon were working on one, but we've never seen it released. And then rumors were flying around a few months ago that Sony were about to release one. Now, we always get rumors and generally, you know, in the weeks leading up to an announcement, those rumors get a bit more solid, a bit more confirmed. We might get renderings of what the products are going to look like. We might get leaks on websites, you know, a day or two before the release that they've accidentally put a picture up of it. We got a little bit more than that with the 200 to 600 because about three weeks ago, there was an online advert of somebody trying to sell an incomplete version of the lens. Not the whole lens, it was just the chassis of the lens. There was no uh, zoom ring or focus rings on there. Well, there was no rubber for the rings. There was no back uh, mounting plate. I'm not even sure there was any optics inside the lens. It looked like just a chassis of a lens that somebody had seemingly stolen from Sony and was trying to sell online. <laughs> I'm not quite sure why, whether they thought somebody was going to build their own or whatever, but it pretty much solidified exactly what we were going to get a 200 to 600 millimeter at 5.6 to 6.3 and straight away people started complaining and they were complaining because it's a 5.6 to 6.3 variable aperture and they're going oh why does it have to be a variable aperture why can't it be 5.6 all the way through the zoom range what does it matter variable apertures are a pain in the ass when you're dealing with an extreme change from the wide end to the long end. So, you know, the, the travel zooms that are f3.5 to 5.6, or, you know, the, the Sigma 60 to 600 is an f4 to 6.3. So you're looking about like a stop and a third difference between the wide end and the long end. So if you're shooting wide angle at the widest aperture and then you zoom the lens in, you're going to lose a stop and a third of light. You're, expo you're going to be underexposed. That can be a nuisance. But f5.6 to 6.3 is one third of a stop. Who the hell notices one third of a stop difference? Absolutely nobody. 5.6, 6.3, 6, 5.6, 6.3, 5.6, 6.3. If you're exposing anywhere near correctly with the, the with the latest cameras, with this, all the Sony cameras that you're going to be using this lens with, can handle a third of a stop, you know, boost in exposure, not a problem at all. So this notion of it needing to be a constant aperture is, with that with that small of a difference, is complete crap. For me, a third of a stop difference from wide to long is essentially the same as a constant aperture. And if they'd made it a constant 5.6, the lens would have been bigger, heavier, and more expensive. Now, granted, I don't know exactly the size and weight of the 200 to 600 mil yet. I've not actually seen that. But comparing up the sizes from the product images, I know that it's, well, slightly bigger than the 100 to 400 is at 400 mil. So it's about 
that sort of length, I think. But it's always that length. It doesn't zoom in and out. So whether you're at 200, whether you're at 600, that's how big the lens is. Which is a bit of a pain for traveling, for transporting the lens around, because you know it takes up a lot more room than the likes of this way you can fold it down. However, not having that extending zoom does mean that you uh, reduce the amount of dust that can get sucked into the lens. Now, I'm going to stick my neck out and say that the Sony 200-600 is going to be the best option for uh, hobbyist sports and wildlife shooters who are on the Sony system for a couple of reasons. Compared up to the competition, you've got the Tamrons and the Sigmas 150-600 to mils. Now, none of those are available in E-mounts. They're all Nikon or Canon that you've then got to adapt. So in terms of the performance that you're going to get from those lenses for autofocus, the Sony, I think, is going to be better. Now, like I said, I've not tried the lens myself, but the reviews that I've seen all say that the autofocus performance of the lens is exceptionally good. It's very fast, very responsive. Apparently, it's not quite as good as the 600mm f4 that's seven times the price. Go figure. But it is very, very good. And I imagine it is better than adapting third-party lenses. Now, in terms of the price, the Sony is $2,000 or $24 or $2,600 Canadian dollars. And in the UK, its pre-order price is 1,800 quid. Now, compare that up to the third-party competitions. The Tamron, the original Tamron, the G1, is only about $800, but is nowhere near as good. The Sigma 150 to 600 Contemporary is about $1,000, so half the price of the Sony. The Tamron G2 is about $1,300, so again, a little bit uh, more expensive than the Sigma, but a lot cheaper than the Sony. The Sigma 150 to 600 or 60 to 600 Sport are around about $1,800, $2,000. Exactly the same sort of price. So the Sony is either the same price or more expensive. But like I said, it's a native lens that I think is going to be a better option. It's an all internal lens, which none of the others are. So I think the weather sealing aspect is going to be better. Maybe if you're on a very strict budget and you cannot justify £2,000, then the Contemporary Sigma and the Tamron are probably the better options for you. But I think if you're looking at the Sigma Sport lenses, unless you specifically need that extra focal range on the wide end, I think the Sony is going to be a much better option. The other thing about the 200 to 600 pricing at $2,000 is that Sony's 100 to 400 mil G Master lens is currently two and a half thousand dollars, so it's about five hundred dollars more expensive for a 100 to 400 versus a 200 to 600. The only thing that I can possibly consider that is the reasoning is because this is a G Master lens while the 200 to 600 is a G series lens. But honestly, in actual kind of usability and stuff, there's not that much of a difference between the G series and the G Master. I think the G Master lenses are stated to resolve up to 100 megapixel sensors, whereas the G series can only do 50 megapixels. Which is irrelevant at the minute because Sony don't have that higher resolution sensor. The most they've got is the 42 megapixel A7R3. And secondly, even if they were to bring out a 100 megapixel sensor, it wouldn't be for a sports and wildlife camera because that's not what people go for. They want fast shooting speeds. Hence why the flagship sports and wildlife cameras, the A9, the 1DX Mark II, the D5, are all 20 to 24 megapixels which the G-series lenses should still be more than good enough for. And again, the, the reviews that I've seen so far, the image quality, again, whilst not quite as good as a lens that is seven times the price, still looks reasonably good for a £2,000 lens that has a three times focal range up to 600mm. 
possibly the internal design you know the the construction the build quality inside the weather sealing might be better on the g master but well this is a g series lens it still feels pretty much this i mean this feels heavier but that's kind of expected but this still feels solid enough there's no dust inside this because it's an all internal so maybe if the 200 to 600 was an, an external zoom in i might have a concern about it being a g series versus g master but what if you're like me and you've already got the 100 to 400 should you switch to the 200 to 600 and this is where i'm in a dilemma because when i use this lens i don't really use it below 200 mil it's always at the long end i'm always three and 400 mil and there's been quite a few times where i'd wanted longer than 400 and i've ended up cropping it in post but my dilemma is that i don't use this lens all that often so is it actually worth me selling this lens at a potential loss and getting the 200 to 600 i mean i would absolutely love to get the 200 to 600 to be able to put it side by side to this but that's just money i cannot afford unless somebody wants to send me one but what are your thoughts and opinions on these? Do you think the 600mm f4 now makes Sony a serious contender for pro sports and wildlife shooters? Do you think the 200 to 600 is the best option for budget sports and wildlife shooters? And what the hell should I do about this? Should I keep the 100 to 400? Should I replace it with the 200 to 600? Should I get them both and do a comparison? Leave your thoughts and comments in the box down below. Thank you so much for stopping by and hopefully I will see you in the next video.